the Bible continually amazes me. I guess my pride wants to think that once I have a verse figured out, I have got it figured out for good. But that is not the way it works with this word of the Spirit, God's word. The Holy Spirit and God's unchanging word and continually work together to bring us new insight that can transform our day and set us free. God's word can be used as a defensive weapon as well as an unoffensive weapon under the direction of the Spirit in us. We sure see this is Jesus' life. Right after Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit descends on him in the form of a dove. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The temple came to him. Satan threw everything he could at Jesus, food, power, recognition, and the wealth of the whole world. But Jesus used the sword of the Spirit to defend himself every time. Three times he said, it's written. Finally, Jesus gets in the temper, tempter's face and says, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and uh, attended him. This leads me to believe that Satan flees not only from the name of Jesus, but he flees from the words of Jesus too. He has no answer to, to the word of God, which is why it's important for us to plant some of it in our hearts and in our minds so that wherever we are, we can take it up to our defense. Holy Spirit, right now bring to mind unchanging truths from God's eternal word. Use these words as your sword to defend me as well as to make me effective off offensively as you work through me today to glorify God in any way you see fit in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Cut it out. Some people like to read so many Bible chapters every day. I would not dissuade dis them from the practice, but I would rather lie my soul soak in half a dozen verses all day than rinse my hand in several chapters. Oh, to be bathed in a text of a scripture and to let it be sucked up in our very soul till it saturates your heart. It cuts both ways. This is word of the spirit which is the word of God, the versal subtlety of the armor of God has given us is truly stunning. Yes, this word of the spirit can be used both as an offensive and a defensive weapon. It can be also used as a scalpel to do self-surgery by cutting out lies and emotions that can grow in our soul like festering torment. God's word, if you take it up, can be used to cut the, that stuff out. It, let it do its work through just the, this one passage today. I remain confident to this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Listen. 
who doesn't fight against discouragement, despair, and possibly even depression. God's word is a weapon against that stuff. It puts all of our problems in perspective. This word of the spirit can be used today to combat love, sucking lies, and uh, faith draining emotion. I am telling you the truth on that. Lord, I am talking of the truth you have given me in your word, and I ask that the Spirit would use it as a sword to remove anything that is contrary to the truth of who I am in you and who you are in me. I believe that I will see and that I am seeing your goodness while I, I lived here on earth. I am waiting for you today. Be my strength. Be my courage. Hallelujah. Amen. Pierce with his truth by Pastor Pete Berisco. The word of God hidden in the heart is a stubborn voice to suppress. I was a big time worry worth all the way through my childhood, teenage years and college. Worry almost seemed to be some sort of a badge of honor, something that gave significance to my life. Then I married Libby. I had this new beautiful bride, so I had a whole new category of worry. Libby worked in Milwaukee, about a 45 minute drive from our home. On snowy nights, I had I had been waiting uh, for her to get home, worrying. This was uh, before cell phones, so she couldn't call me if she was running a little behind. More than once, the, she would come uh, home and happily bound in the door only to find me in tears of fear and worry. Thankfully, God's word, the sword of the spirit, intervened and caught deeply into that situation. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is uh, not life more important than food and uh, the body more important than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet you, uh, your heavenly Father feeds them. Uh, are you not much more valuable than them? Who, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? The familiar words cut deeply. Jesus said, do not worry. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Pete, your worry is not some little personality quirk or sign of commitment. If Jesus says, do not, and you will still do, why would make your worry? The conclusion was obvious. Worry is the exact opposite of trust and faith. Worry is a sin to bring before the world, the Lord. It took me to my knees asking Jesus, do something about this. He did. Through the Word and the Spirit. Jesus redeemed me from worry completely. In fact, nowadays I worry that I don't worry enough. That's God's word in action. That's this word of the Spirit which Paul calls us to take up as part of the armor of God in the battles we fight every day. My battle that day was against worry. What's yours today? Father God, by the power of your spirit in me and by the truth of your word, this word of the spirit, I stand aside and ask that you would show me the places where my life is out of line with your truth. Do something, Jesus. Do something, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The book 
that understands you. I read and read and read with an indescribable warmth surging within. I could not find words to express my awe and wonder, and suddenly the realization dawned upon me. This was the book that would understand me. Emil Kallier was born in a small French town and was raised as an atheist. As a soldier in World War I, the horrors he saw set his unbelief in stone. While recovering from a bullet wound that shattered his arm, he married but informed his wife that no Bible would ever be allowed in their home. Still, he was a voracious reader and went through everything he could find trying to satisfy the desires of his heart. I had been longing for a book that would understand me, he said. Unable to find one, he began to write a book on of his own. Upon its completion, he sat down under a tree to read his own work, but he was bitterly disappointed. He confessed the whole undertaking would not work simply because it was of my own making. He was this despondent, but God was up to something. That night, against the household rules, his wife handed him a Bible that she had miraculously found that very day. Instead of rejecting it, he opened it and started to read, and then he read some more. He read long into the night, mostly from the Gospels. The sword of the Spirit began to do its work as the word of God came alive in his mind and his heart. The providential circumstances amid which the book had found me now made it clear that while I seemed absorbed to speak of a book understanding a man, this could be said of the Bible because its pages were animated by the presence of the living God and the power of his mighty acts. To this God I prayed that night, and the God who answered was the same God of whom it was spoken in that book. No wonder Paul exhorts us to take up this word of the Spirit, which is the word of God. It's not just a book, but it's living and active and in the hands of the Holy Spirit, a powder cage of life transformation and victory over the evil one. Hallelujah. Dear God, I sincerely thank you for giving me a book that understands me. By the power of your spirit in me, stir up these words of yours in my mind and in my heart, so that my life might naturally reflect who I am in you and who you are in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The most popular teaching of 2020. Embrace the promises of God. We have endured so much this year, but there is one thing that remains constant. The encouragement we find in God's word. The Bible reminds us of God's promises of peace, hope, and his abiding presence through all our days. The best of 2020 teaching, the best of 2020 features six of the most requested Bible teaching messages and will encourage you as you seek to thrive in a chaotic world and experience God's promises of peace and rest no matter what you are facing. This teaching will help you 
live well in a divided culture, fight spiritual battles, experience of the power of faith, claim your identity in Christ and grasp God's promise of rest. A challenge to rethink your prayers. If any of you should ask me for an epitome of the Christian religion, I should say that it is in one word, prayer. Prayer. We hear that word a lot. It's all over the place in the Bible. You hear it in passing conversations. It's preached, preached about in sermons galore. When you hear that word, what comes to mind? What do you feel? At the end of Ephesians 6, when Paul finishes talking about our spiritual armor and spiritual warfare, he concludes the list of our arsenal with this exhortation for prayer. And pray in the spirit of all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on prayer for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should the next couple of days we are going to de dissect the, this uh, passage through by through in the process we are going to blow up some uh, stereotypes uh, and rip out some deeply enter enter entrenched misunderstandings looking at prayer from the perspective of who we are in Christ can radically alter our practice of prayer and transform our lives in powerful ways listen we have inherited a lot of ideas about prayer what it is uh, supposed to look like how you are expected to do it how often you think you should do it but probably don't but when was the, the last time you really considered prayer as it related uh, related to the other radical things that we know to be true about who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, I am curious. I take prayer for granted and do it according to what I have learned through traditions and the examples of others. Renew my mind about prayer according to the truth of who I am in you and who you are in me. Hallelujah. Amen.